here we have my in-floor heating system for my shop. Uh, a little bit of background. My shop here is almost 1,200 square feet. It's uh, It's got about 14 foot high ceilings. Uh, it's got a six inch thick slab. Uh, right now, current temperature is 64 degrees Fahrenheit. And the outside temperature right now is uh, three degrees Celsius. So it's uh, like what, 37, 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I have this set up on one zone uh, but I have four heating loops um, I put these in myself in the concrete um, before we poured the floor uh, when we were building this building um, I stapled all the PEX tubing uh, down to the SM insulation uh, that way and I put up well the concrete got poured on top that way with it being on the bottom stapled to the insulation we could always like bolt down equipment or whatnot and not have to worry about piercing the pex tubing because if that happens you're uh you're done it's uh it's not good um <clears throat> so uh right here we have a the system is powered by this uh natural gas water heater uh and it's a closed loop system just for all the youtube safety officers out there um this is a 100 percent closed loop system yes there is glycol in the system it's a four-part glycol solution uh, made by a company called Chemfrost, and it's got it with with four parts. I think the burst temperature goes down to like thirty or forty degrees Celsius below zero. Uh, so in in southern Ontario where I live, the the winters get bad, but it's it's never colder than like minus twenty five, minus thirty. So I'm not uh, not too concerned if we lose some power for a week my floor the pex tubing won't explode on me so that's why i went with the glycol solution but i filled this system with uh buckets and i'm going to get into a little bit later how uh, how i filled it um but i made sure that the domestic water and the system water never touch they never will touch um so uh there's no uh health risk there also yes i see that there is no cover on these two boxes I am a licensed electrician. I'm a Red Sea electrician in Canada. I didn't put covers on these boxes only for the simple fact that uh, we're still kind of going through uh, the growing pains here. Uh, if there's any troubleshooting issues or whatnot, it's a simple, uh, you don't have the cover on. It's easier to, to play with. And uh, I didn't have a 4 and 11 16s cover in the shop. Uh, so let's get right down to it. There, there, right here, there's two different ways of how to uh, plumb this system, uh, depending on how you circulate the water. You could either push water from the hot side down into your floor or you can pull water back now the advantage of pulling water back so essentially sucking as opposed to blowing is the water is colder coming back um, water comes out at 130 degrees and it'll come back at whatever the ambient temperature of your shop is so if you want there's the shop to about you know 60 degrees 65 degrees that'll be what the water comes back on and that'll be the ambient temperature just as like a rule of thumb um, so with the, co the cooler water circulating through that pump, it will, uh, prolong your pump life. Uh, again, the pump isn't overly expensive. I think it was like $80 Canadian for that three speed Grunfoss pump, but, uh, let's just, you know, uh, keep it lasting as long as we can. So we will start here from the hot side. So we have a union in case we ever have to pull the, uh, the water heater out. We have a union. We have a, uh, just a ball valve. Uh, that way we can shut off the system and, and pull this out nice and easy. I use this ball valve as my fill port. Uh, like I said, we'll get into that later. We have here the air scoop with the expansion tank and the, uh, just an air bleeder. Um, I have a pressure gauge here. I have two actually on the hot, on the in and the out. Uh, probably overkill. I don't think you need two, but I just want to make sure that uh, both sides are equal in pressure. And then we have a ball valve before the manifold, just so if we do have to pull the system apart, we won't lose uh, pressure in the floor uh, or any uh, any any water mixture. And then so it's coming down to the to the manifold into the floor coming back up on the cold side again another ball valve and right here i have another pressure gauge and this right here i used as my vent uh valve uh i wanted a ball valve here um instead of like a little bleeder valve just for the simple fact that i had, i could attach that to a hose uh attach a hose to that i mean and uh that way i could vent uh, whatever comes out of there into a bucket you know because you vent the air out you're going to get uh, you're going to get liquid with it at some point and uh you know it's 
the glycol is not cheap, so I want to save as much as I can. Then we have the Grunfoss pump. Uh, that is directional. Uh, there's an arrow on it, so make sure you orientate that the proper way. And that comes down to another valve and then another union. This air scoop is also directional. Just make sure you, uh, you orientate that the right way or it won't work either. This, this is our expansion tank. This right here under this cap is what uh, looks, looks like a uh, like an air like an air valve for a car tire. This right here has to be pressurized to your system pressure. Now, because I filled this with a uh, a Milwaukee 18 volt cordless pump, that was capable of producing about 22 psi. So I had to set this to 22 psi. It comes uh, pre-charged with 50 psi. So what I did is I just attached a, uh, um, I have a digital, uh, a digital air chuck for car tires, truck tires, and I just bled the, the air out until um, it was around 22 PSI, which was a system pressure. Currently we have uh, pressure, what's that, 32 uh, PSI, and that's only because uh, as the water heats up, um, I guess it expands, you get a higher pressure. Um, I just have this off currently just so we can, uh, the water heater's off just so we can talk on this video. Uh, as you can see, we have some uh, electrical items up top besides the uh, the thermostat. And what those are for, uh, we'll go through that. The thermostat here controls, uh, at the end of the day, it, does, it controls a Taiko relay. I went with a Taiko brand. So the thermostat comes and tells that when it calls for heat, that's what tells a circulation pump to turn on. And it's that circulation pump that sends the hot water through the floor, which creates heat. It gets cold, that calls for heat, that circulates the pump, temperature comes back up. Now, I had this system hooked up, so we had circuit power to the relay, and then we had... Um, we just had uh, from the, the normally open side of the relay, we had it go into the pump. Problem with that is, is that uh, it would just run, run, run nonstop, and it wasn't efficient because the tank would empty, uh, like the, all the hot water would empty. We'd have cold water come back, and that tank couldn't keep up with the amount of water leaving. Um, so what I did is I put a 24-hour uh, relay or relay timer on it, and we have circuit power coming through. It's powering that timer, and I have that timer set up for 30 minutes running. 45 minutes off so as you can see right now it's energized we have circulation um and nice and quiet but we have uh, circulation right now so the shop's heating up because the thermometer the thermostat sorry is calling for heat um so when that when that times out after half an hour that will shut off therefore the pump will shut off and uh now this gives it a chance that water heater will heat back up and uh, in that 45 minute allotted time and that just makes things easier on the water heater it'll prolong its life it's more efficient we're not wasting uh natural gas keeps uh the bills a little bit lower and all that good stuff and and so far that's been the most efficient way and uh and before the shop would be around uh you know 60 degrees but i noticed already i had this i had the thermostat a little bit high just to you know, give a little stress test to the system. And, and the temperature was climbing like, I think 10 degrees Fahrenheit in uh, in like less than six hours, uh, just by letting it uh, heat up all the way and, and just circulate water. Now, you right here we have a 120 volt to 24 volt transformer. It's a 40 VA transformer. And that's only for the simple fact that this thermostat here, because it's Wi-Fi enabled, I can, I can control the temperature anywhere in the world, see what temperature it is. Um, I have a network out here in the shop. I brought it in just for this um, this thermostat. Now, these thermostats need uh, a common wire, 24 volts to power it. You know, the other the old thermostats don't, the mercury ones don't need that. Uh, and then a lot of them are powered with batteries. Now, that'd be fine. This Taco Relay does have a 24 volt transformer in it. But when that timer times out for 45 minutes every half an hour, I won't have power on the thermostat and that's an issue because you know i won't be able to uh to see what the temperature is and then honeywell sends all these annoying emails saying hey your uh, your power's off what's going on here so what i did was i have a uh, 24 volts just going through and that's a five conductor cable so i just made joints on here just to go through the box uh to keep it down to one cable and that just goes through into the thermostat and then that box we have the the two wires calling for heat 
Um, so it, it doesn't cause any issues. Uh, that'll time out. That'll shut off. Yeah, sure. You know, that thermostat's calling for heat, but because you can't energize that relay, that there's no possible way for that circulation pump to, uh, to, to run. Now we, uh, after I was kind of playing with this, I noticed the circulator, um, and that half an hour on high, on high speed, it would drain the tank about 10 minutes on low speed. It would drain the tank. It wouldn't even drain the tank fully, like of, of all that's hot water. So you'd still have quite a bit of hot water left and it wasn't heating up as efficiently on the medium speed. It'll dump the hot water through the system and cold water come back in about a half an hour. So it actually works out pretty good. Like, but your mileage may vary based on the size of your system and uh, the length of, uh, of your runs. The set, like the initial setup of this was, uh, was interesting because there's four sources of control. You have the control on the, th uh, the thermostat. You have the control on the thermostat for the water heater. You have the control for the speed of the circulating pump, and you have control for the time of the whole system time for how long you want it to run. Uh, all that together, you got to kind of to, to play with that. And for my system, it works out. Uh, you know, it took some some Jimmy rigging and, and some playing with to figure out where the sweet spot is. Now that water here is capable of heating water to 160 degrees, and and you, the rule of thumb is you're not supposed to really put water in your concrete hotter than. Uh, but 130 at the high end because they say it can crack. So I have that set for 130. I have that Grunvoss pump, Grunvoss pump set to uh, the medium speed. I, like I said, that timer I have uh, half an hour on, 45 minutes off, and I normally have the thermostat set for 60, and that's that's plenty. You know, I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with that. But as the temperature increases outside, you know, in the spring or decreases, you know, closer as we uh, come closer to winter, because it's uh, beginning of November and it's already three degrees here in Canada Celsius. Um, we, uh, you know, that might have to be adjusted. So it's one of those things you could play with it, check it. You know what I mean? If you, if you have to, uh, you know, change the time so that the tank can stay run longer, like the circulation pump run longer or the tank heat up longer. You just got to monitor it. Eventually I think after like a, a season of heating uh, this, I'll have it kind of down a hundred percent. Now some people might ask, and I know they've commented before, like, why would you go with this system? You know, use a boiler. Well, the problem was the boiler system that they wanted to sell me when I built this building was about $7,000 Canadian which I think is expensive. Uh, you know, if it was for the house, it'd be a different story. Uh, if I heated the house with, uh, you know, in-floor heating, I, I would, I would spring for it and, and buy that. But for a shop at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's, it's a hobby shop. I don't work out of it. Um, so this is good enough. Like the whole system I have here, I probably have $2,000 Canadian into the system, like not including the installation of the gas, uh, but just for the fittings, like the, the circulation pump, you know, uh, the expansion tank, um, your air scoop, the relay, all that stuff. We're, we're probably $2,000 Canadian, which is a pretty decent savings. Uh, 5,000 bucks. Now people are going to say, uh, in the comments, you know, like your tank's not rated for it. It's not going to last, blah, blah, blah. How many tanks, of, like how many water heaters can I buy for five grand? You know, even if I get three, four, five years out of this water heater here and I buy the next one for a thousand bucks, I'm still $3,000 in and I've had it for five years, four, five, three, four, five years. You know, I could buy a lot of tanks, a lot of system components for that, uh, for the, the cost of that boiler. Now I could have saved a bit of money. I didn't have to go with the power vent, but, uh, I just, you know, for what it was, it's, it's done right. It's, it's complete. Don't have to worry about nothing or bump in the, the flute or whatever, the little chimney for the non power vent models. Um, I could also went with a, a natural gas forced air heater. TSC store has them on sale for like 800 bucks every, every other month. It seems like it's in the flyer, but you know, I wanted something efficient. I wanted something quiet. You know, I didn't want to have to just hear noise when that thing starts up. Uh, and then, uh, you know, so for, for $2,000, you, you could build this system that I have here. Um, and, and get a, you know, and have a, a good, a good efficient heat. How I filled this system. So I used a series of buckets because I didn't want to cross contaminate uh, the domestic water with the glycol mixture. So I use this as my fill valve. So I had the Milwaukee pump pumping from a bucket and what I would do is I would open this and then initially I had that open to bleed the air as the system would fill up, 
you know, the air would escape, but eventually it got so there was enough liquid in the system that water would trickle, trickle out of here. So I have, I had that trickling into a bucket. Eventually I closed it and then the system would fill and fill and fill and whatever air got trapped in there, it would eventually equalize to about 22 PSI on both sides, on both, both sides there it would equalize up to about 22 PSI. And that's when I would close the fill valve and then I would open up the air bleed valve and that would shoot out a bunch of water and whatever into a bucket. Then I would just dump that bucket back into the pump bucket, what I'm pumping from. And I did that multiple times over and over and over again. I probably did that probably about 15, 20 times. It was a long, it was a long process just to get the air out of it. Now, uh, I can confidently say the air is out of this system. Uh, you know, there was a little bit of air left above this, uh, uh above this valve here, but that the air bleeder will took out all the air after it circulated for a little while. And, uh, what you could do just to make sure, um, you know, your pump is, you know, uh, like what the, to make sure you have all the air to your system, uh, you could check your, your pump heat. If that pump is screaming hot, like you could barely put your hand on it. That means you probably got air in the system. Uh, and, uh, you need to keep bleeding off cause, uh, you don't want to burn your pump out. But right now that, uh, that's a good temperature. So we have, I'm using my Milwaukee laser temp gun. And right now we have the system circulating. And what do we have here? 81. 75 degrees like it's been circulating for a little while now so the tank's probably running out and it would have kicked on by now but i have the tank switched off just so we can talk here on this video and, and coming back we have 70.6 degree water coming back through uh now like i said in the beginning of the video they say whatever whatever that's coming back on like whatever the water temp coming back out that'll be eventually what your your ambient temperature is so this system is set up really really well and it's working great like Let's check out the floor temperature, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, we have 71, 73, 68. Now, as we move away further and further, um, you know, 66 by the front door there, 64, 61, you know, so uh, eventually it'll, uh, the whole slab will eat, uh, will heat up evenly, but, uh, it's working. You know, the proof is on the wall proofs in the, the, temp, the th like the temp gun. It's a great system. It's efficient and it'll work for you. Uh, I hope somebody, uh, will, uh, learn something from this video, uh, and use it. What I did was I, uh, I went through YouTube and, and the internet and there wasn't a whole lot for like home built in for heating systems. Um, there was a, there, I just kind of cherry picked the best, the best ideas, the best things from what other people have done. I've kind of come up with this. So if you got any questions on how I did it, like the math behind it, how I figured this out, uh, drop me a line in the comments. I'm here to help. I just, you know, want, uh, you know, just want people to, uh, to be able to get something from this video. That's why I'm putting it on here. So, uh, yeah, if you have any, uh, any questions, feel free to drop me a line in the comments.